question will go to Mr. Walker. How should um, how should street repairs be prioritized? What is the um, what is the the way you prioritize what streets get repaired when? Okay. Typically, what we we do, and this happens every year after uh, you know winter is starting to end and uh, the snow is uh, thawing and everything, we uh, have a group that goes out and we review the streets. And one of the things we look at is you know how deep are the cracks, or is the asphalt heaving, or how many potholes did we repair over the winter time? You know what is the traffic load on that? If it is a street very seldom used, maybe it won't get as much detailed work as a, a main thoroughfare would and then once we look at the streets we kind of categorize each one and give it a numeric and this this would be one of the top 10 streets we need to fix once we go through all the streets and we do drive up and down every one of them then we decide here's how much money that we have because that's when we set the budget we said but here's how much money is going to road repair typically it's going to be around 300 to 350 thousand dollars a year how far can we go with this? What are the priority streets? Where are we going to get the biggest bang for the buck? And then we can decide how many roads that we can take care of with the money that we have. But it's not a, a scientific process, it's a visual process. We look at the streets, look at the condition. Uh, if it's one that has a lot of traffic on it, like a Main Street or a Broadway, or you know, sometimes Third Street can be very heavily traveled. But uh, that's how we do it. But if you look at the streets over the years since 2004, we have spent quite a few million dollars improving our infrastructure. I think our, our streets and our sidewalks are in, more, more, are in better condition now than they have been in a very long time. And I would agree with that general matrix of figuring out which roads to uh, repair. Um, I do find it perplexing that some of the roads that uh, become so bad, so in such bad shape, such as uh, East Canal Street, you know, as long as they do with as much damage as seems to be to the road. Um, but it goes back to, um, for me, one of the things that um, Mr. Bunker said was wanting to take money from the mayor's position and adding it with other monies to create a new position for the economic development. Now, I would focus on getting money back into the infrastructure repair that we need in the sidewalks and the uh, streets uh, instead of creating new positions. In the community survey that I posted online that was on SurveyMonkey, so I had no influence in it whatsoever. It was a blind survey. I don't know who answered it, and I didn't want to know who answered it. But about 93% of the people who took time to answer that survey and it took a while, 30, 40 minutes, if you actually filled it all out. 93% of the people think that our streets and our sidewalks and our curbs are in very poor or extremely poor condition. Because that's terrible. I mean, that's, that's across all income categories. That's across all educational categories. That's, all, that's across all categories. In, in my vision, when we was at the schools, we had the capital projects plan where we sat down and we uh, in the school, we laid back money for like, we had a roof that was going to be 15 years out. We estimated the cost of the roof and we divided it by 15 and we put that much back every year. So when it came time to do a roof, we could do the roof. I don't think that will work very well perhaps in the streets, but Ray, Jim, and Gabe both talked about that. We do need a, I, I propose a 10-year plan, analyze the streets, what needs to be done, try to cost it out, and then build a budget around that so they can start being fixed. On the sidewalk part, uh, I'm proposing a public uh, and private uh, uh, or, uh, co uh, coordination to start repairing our sidewalks by working with the, with the homeowners and getting the sidewalks in this town repaired. If you notice how many people in this town walk up and down the street because the sidewalks are unsafe. You asked me the question in the streets first, correct? Okay. Now, on the, the rebuttal side, of, uh, when what you said that the streets and the sidewalks are terrible, uh, two years ago we were voted by the Governor's Council on People with Disabilities as in the top 10 most mobile communities in the state of Indiana. 
so somebody is doing the right thing. The streets and the sidewalks are being addressed. If you look at the number of sidewalks, number of streets that have been done to help with those who have mobility issues, and we work very closely with harvesting capabilities, and you can check with them there when we're doing the streets. If they find areas, we work with them to get them corrected. So to say that we are not doing enough or that the streets and the sidewalks are terrible, I don't get it because that's not what we're hearing in the Governor's Council and gave us that award for it. I don't know how much time the Governor spends walking on the sidewalks in Peru, but I do know that <laughs> we do have some bad sidewalks. Uh, we have some pretty bad sidewalks. There are a lot of places where you just can't walk uh, on the sidewalks in Peru. And uh, one of the things I would like to do is partner with the uh, correctional facility uh, at Grissom and maybe get uh, a program where we can get uh, labor there to help tear up the sidewalks and get them out and maybe help frame up uh, sidewalks to mitigate some of the costs, the costs to the residents. Gabe had a good one on the governor. Uh, <laughs> Again, with the community survey, with 93% of the local people saying they're not happy with the sidewalk, that should tell us something. When we start to when we start to listen to our community, we start learning what our community really wants. I know the governor's council might be bright and all that all that stuff, but they don't walk up and down their sidewalks every day or push baby carriages down the sidewalks every day. Or every day. Uh, my daughter-in-law was over here from Illinois, and uh, she said that she couldn't walk on the sidewalks. And one time we were walking down the sidewalk, my wife did and bruised up her head. Uh, so our sidewalks are not in good shape in the majority of the city. Some areas are, are good, that's true. But the majority of the city and the majority of the citizens disagree with that comment. Which would be, this question is for you. Would you favor a higher local first policy for any open or available positions within the city? Yes, um, I think that we have very many uh, good candidates for just about any position that we have in the city and that we should definitely put first our local citizens who pay taxes here and should be looking at them first um, to fill employment uh, opportunities. I believe in local first also. We have a lot of talented people in this community. Some projects, quite obviously, you can't hire local because of the complexity and the need of architect architectural designs and things like that. But again, I bring back with my experience in the schools. Uh, we remodeled all the bathrooms at the junior high and the high school. Uh, we built it into the capital projects plan over a period of three or four years. I'm not sure, it's been a while. And we used all local labor to get that done and we paid for it. As we, as we accomplish that project. Uh, so the, the taxpayers save money because we use local people, and, and they also save money because we didn't have to buy the issue to uh, update the bathrooms at the time. Whenever we look at employees for the city of Peru, it's a, uh, a notice is out, so we look at anybody who wants to be in Peru, uh, whether it's looking at the police department, fire department, street department, uh, those are the big three that we have the higher numbers. But we also hear people say we need to grow our community. And I agree we need to grow our community. More population would be good. So I'm not going to exclude somebody from outside the community having an opportunity to move here and take one of these jobs if they're qualified. So to say we're just going to look at people in our community and not open our doors and welcome new residents to our community to be considered for one of these jobs, I think would be a backwards look at where we want to lead the community. We talked earlier about uh, somebody said population was declining. Well, if we're not going to allow new uh, folks to come into our community looking at the opportunities, that isn't going to change. So we do need to look at new opportunities and allow everybody an equal chance. I don't think that the best way to have population growth in Peru is to give jobs to uh, people from outside of the community. The best way to have population growth in Peru is to foster a community where kids growing up here say, that's the community that I grew up in, I love that community, and I want to come back there, I want to be a part of it. And fostering that kind of community is how we're going to get population growth. I have equal time. 
no uh, We do need uh, businesses in this community, and some of the proposals that I had to try to get businesses in the community are in the top 50 part, obviously. Uh, they're the type of uh, industry and, and job opportunities that we can get that won't cost the community an arm and leg to try to get them in here. And since they mentioned population growth, I did have a chart here. In 2004, uh, we had 12,710 people in our community. And in July 1st uh, census estimate, we are now down to 10,937. We have lost uh, almost 3,000 people in our community in the last 12 years. Well, if you also, Wayne, if you're a numbers guy, if you look at the number in, in um, the county, the county has maybe gone down a little bit as well, but you know a lot of people that used to live inside the citizen, uh, the corporate mountains of city of Peru are living in some of the suburbs just outside the city of Peru, so they haven't left the community. They may have changed from a city resident to a county resident, but are they still a member of this community? Yes, they are. Is that responsible for everything? I'm not saying that is 100% of it, but you have to look at all numbers instead of just looking at a number for a debate and using that as your background. Okay. The next question is for you. Um, what are your ideas about reducing the tax rate in Peru? Reducing the tax rate. Okay, I have a question for you, Wayne. Here, let me do that. Earlier you said that the assessed value dropped how bad? What happens when the assessed value drops? So you're paying that tax rate on a lesser amount. How much more are you actually paying? How much? Okay. The whole point here, whenever your assessed value drops, your tax rate goes up, but you're only paying that tax on a, what they call a maximum levy. This is a maximum amount of taxes the state will allow you to raise. It only goes up by a certain percent each year. 
for 2016, it's 2.6%. It's the maximum you can raise that levy that you're paying taxes on. So whenever your, your rate or your assessed value goes down, your rate will go up. But you're multiplying that rate towards a lesser number. So people know the rate goes up means you're paying more. Keep in mind that the state of Indiana developed a plan. Your tax that you pay, property tax, is 1% on a residential property, 2% on farms and businesses, 3% on industry. It will never exceed that amount. Property taxes in Peru, Indiana aren't at the full 1%. You're not paying 1% of your home's value. So you can say anything you want about the tax rate that assessed value has dropped. We don't accept the assessed value. That's not a function of the city government. So naturally, when the rate goes down on the assessed value, the property tax rate does go up. We do have taxes that are too high in Miami County and in Peru. Uh, one of the things that I feel like I have a track record of showing is my willingness and ability to work with the utility company on keeping utility rates low. Um, there's been a few times when ordinances are brought to the city council regarding the utility rate, something that as uh, the mayor and on the city council we have far more control over than uh, the tax rates. Uh, that uh, Walker and Bunker are talking of. And I, have, I believe that I've shown that I'm willing to work with differing views to try to make sure that rates stay low and food stays affordable for the city, or the people in Peru. back at the last four years. Wabash has went back 10.96% in their tax rate. Winamax went back 6.99. Three, uh, uh, Tipton, Huntington, and Warsaw has been basically uh, in the negative. Uh,